now. Uh, my name is Amrit and I'm a product manager at Yahoo and welcome to 47th Hadoop User Group Meetup. Uh, today we have very interesting sessions lined up for you. Uh, so stay till the end and speak to uh, all these presenters today because we're going to be here until the end of the presentation. So we're going to kick off our session today with the search, uh, especially the Apache's solar and blue scheme. Uh, we have the CEO and founder of uh, Lucid Books himself here. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to talk about the security in the hive. I have pages from Bartleworks and uh, uh, Chris from Yahoo to talk about that. And then finally, we're going to conclude our session today with the better understanding of the security in the Hadoop. Uh, and I have Bosco to talk about the infrastructure. So before we get into the discussions, uh, let's just talk about logistics. The whole session today will be recorded, uh, and the videos will be uploaded to the YouTube slash UIDM theater in a week's time. Uh, you can go to this channel and you can find the past for the user of the video. Uh, the slides will also be shared. Uh, you can find these slides on the slideshare.net slash YDN. So YDN is the keyword this of that, both of the, for the YouTube and the slideshare.net. Uh, and the next hub would be on September 17th. So go to the meetup page and subscribe to that. Uh, I think these are getting filled very fast. So as soon as you just add a GP to this for a big one. Uh, I think this time we managed to get a better place uh, for this whole presentation. I remember last time it was at the... By the way, how many of you are here for the first time? Alright, welcome. So, uh, so as you guys would not know actually, so, so far we're presenting now in the cafeteria, it gets, used to get more disturbed. Uh, but this place is much better than the class here. So, but still if you have to talk, take a call on network, uh, please uh, find space outside to talk. Just make sure we can stop the recording here. Uh, it's going to go to the YouTube. And we're trying to make it even better every time. So if you find come across any good topic which you want to really care about, uh, just let us know. Just directly let us know on the meetup page or write us you know, to the hub meetup at yahoo.com. Uh, we will be looking for your feedbacks. All right, so let's get started. Uh, and uh, please welcome Grant to talk about the Apache World News Day. So I'm the CTO and co-founder of LucidWorks. I've been a long time Lucene and Solar committer. I also started the Apache uh, Mahout or Mahout project, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, so I've been in this space quite a, quite a long time. Uh, and this talk, I think, has really kind of spawned out of some of the trends I've been seeing in the search space and then obviously around the big data space and all of those kinds of things. <clears throat> and it kind of starts with maybe a little bit of a provocative statement here, is that that little box up there in the top, that stuff's dead, right? Search is dead, right? We've been hearing this from a lot of people for a long time. Got to go use all these other technologies, etc. cetera. Uh, obviously, we're here at Yahoo, and I think Yahoo and Google and the like would all uh, disagree with that statement. And, and in fact, search is not dead. What has changed, though, around search is the way we're leveraging the capabilities that search offers. There's a lot of new things in Lucina Solar that if you haven't looked at them in a long time, you might say, oh, I didn't know I could do that in search engine technology. That's really interesting. I want to go try that out. Uh, for instance, you're seeing more and more people drive BI-like interfaces completely off of search. This is a, a partner of ours, Zoom Data. That whole entire interface there is all off of queries and facets and searches against uh, search engine technology like solar. Uh, another example here where I'm doing, uh, and I'll show you this as a demo later, actually doing things like calculating the similarity between molecules so that I can do search across chemical structures and then marry that with text-based relationships, etc., to produce much more interesting visualizations across my data. Uh, or do some really interesting things where I'm looking at time and space trade-offs to narrow down and better understand my data, better uh, bisect the data, et cetera, et cetera. Or last but not least, use some of the very interesting spatial capabilities that are built, built into the Lucene and solar engines to actually look at, again, BI style of questions where I can actually ask questions of the data 
get fuzzy matches on it and then overlay on top of it uh, things like facet spatial uh, capabilities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's kind of the basic high-level premise of this talk is that, hey, there's a lot of new cool stuff you can do with search engine technology that maybe you haven't thought of. And the basic premise here is that search technology has really evolved over the past few years uh, quite extensively if you haven't looked at Lucene and Solar before. How many people are Lucene, Solar, or, or variants of that users in the audience here? So you're familiar with the technology. You use Lucene and Solar every day in your life, whether that's Yelp or, or Twitter or Netflix or whatever. You're using Lucene and Solar technology. You just don't know. It powers by far and away uh, a large majority of applications and things like that other than internet search, if you will. And in fact, there's some internet search engines out there that also use it, at least in part of their sites. So, you know, at the end of the day, we still are focused on what our core strength is, which is we want to provide search capabilities, libraries, services, etc. cetera. Uh, but we want to go well beyond that and add in a number of other interesting things. I think if you've been paying, atten paying attention to all this big data and data platform capabilities out there on the market now, they're kind of all trying to converge on, yes, we want to be the data store that offers, uh, you know, offers good relational capability, offers fuzzy matching, et cetera, et cetera. The databases are all trying to add search capabilities, so are the NoSQL stores. Well, we're not sitting, uh, we're not sitting on our hands in the search world, we're adding more database-like capabilities. So at the end of the day, you as a developer or you as a user of all this stuff wins. But you know, some of the things that we've added in recent uh, memory, we've added more relational capabilities, so you can do joins, you can do uh, more advanced types over that data, et cetera, et cetera. You can also do a lot more interesting faceting or bucketing of your data, histograms, et cetera, aggregations, analytics, essentially allow your users to type in keyword type uh, style uh, questions just like they're used to in their everyday lives, but then overlay on top of that, you know, roll-offs, aggregations, et cetera, et cetera, such that you have a much more complete picture of what's in your data than just giving them, you know, the classic 10 blue links. Um, we've also added in some really cool spatial capabilities. If you're not familiar with the Java topological suite, which is one of the top Java implementations of all kinds of spatial things. We've integrated that in very tightly into Lucene and Solar such that you can do not only bounty box type searches, i.e., you know, find me all the products or things within five miles of where we're at now, but you can actually do complex polygon intersections, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm actually even told now that you can give it a route and that you can find all the documents along those routes. You can do kind of route finding kinds of things as well. That's all in there and it's very, very fast. You can start to do things like build out record linkage systems whereby I'm trying to understand whether this Bob Smith that's in my database is also is the same Bob Smith as over here. I can use Lucene and Solar as kind of the foundation of that and, put in, and give me good candidates that I can then go rank on. But I think some of the other things you're seeing is, uh, you know, companies like Splunk, et cetera, have been using search engine technology to drive alerts on top of IT operations, et cetera. So those things are all very much possible and very, very fast and efficient. Uh, the most interesting thing, though, I think, is that more and more people are realizing, especially as their data volumes grow, that you have a top-end problem on your hands. That is, you need to rank that data. In the old days when you only got back a thousand records from the database, well yeah, you could spend a day or two on them and get through all of them and kind of piece it together in your head. Now when you get back a million records or a billion records, you need something that tells you here is what my priority is. You give me your opinion about what, how I should rank this and then I'm going to go and deal with those results. And at the end of the day, that's what search engine technology has been built from, from the ground, from day one. Obviously, you know, kind of the, the old search technology was really geared towards words and, and language, but a lot of what we've done is try to integrate in how to incorporate other features into that ranking problem such that you can have a very fast and efficient scoring engine at your hands, right? So if you look at large-scale web search, you look at e-commerce search, et cetera, 
You obviously want to match on keywords for your customers, for your users, but you also want to overlay on top of it all kinds of other features that aren't actually in that core content, right? Things like page rank, or whether you have the stuff in stock or not, or whether uh, somebody tweeted about this. All of those kinds of signals, if you will, add to how do I want to score this. We wanted in the, the Lucene Solar uh, open source projects to be able to make that easier for you to incorporate those things so you can solve more and more of these top end problems. Interestingly enough, you know, if we, if we wave our hands a little bit at the math, you can start to see how you can build recommendation engines just off of search technology. You can build uh, cl simple classification systems, et cetera, that are often good enough for most people in most situations. Are they going to go win the Netflix prize or some you know, competition around uh, machine learning? No, but you know what? You already know how to deploy your search engine technology. And chances are the way that you're going to make that better is by overlaying your business logic and your business rules, not necessarily by you having the absolute best algorithm in place that does you know, whatever the latest and greatest uh, academic way of thinking about things is. So at the end of the day, you know, these things all start to be pretty interesting. And so as, a, as an open source community, we really started to look at how do we make this stuff simpler in the open source. And so there's been a lot going on. First and foremost, we really looked at, hey, you know, if we're going to scale with the Hadoops and, and the HBases of the world, we need to be a lot more efficient. We went through and did, I think, what every large-scale Java project does, which is figure out how to manage your own memory, reinvent garbage collection, all that stuff. We got rid of string objects. We got rid of objects pretty much all over the place and just started managing our own byte arrays. Another thing that we did that's really interesting, if you uh, put on your computer science hat, we started leveraging finite state automaton and finite state transducers in the system. This led to some really significant gains. It was also a really cool uh, uh, analysis of how, or, or a really interesting way of how open source development works because the way the guys got together and built this out was pretty fascinating just from a study of open source. The takeaway on this one, for instance, is that when we put this in, if you had indexed the Wikipedia, the entire Wikipedia collection in the old way, uh, Lucene builds, in, builds behind the scenes essentially a term dictionary or you know, a lookup table, right? Uh, if you did it in the old way, it took up, say, all of the unique terms in Wikipedia took up roughly 20 or 30 megs of memory. I forget the exact number. When we put in the FSA, FST stuff, it took up 250K, the whole entire dictionary. And oh, by the way, it got a whole lot faster. Wildcard queries and, and regex queries, etc., cetera, uh, were sped up something like 250%. Uh, and so it brought to the table a whole bunch of really cool things that you can now do um, such that even if you're not using Lucene, I would encourage you to go check out the FSA and FST library that we have in Lucene. It has a lot of really cool properties that may help you solve similar kinds of problems. Uh, some of the other things we did, we made all of the underpinnings pluggable. So you can plug in your own scoring formats, you can plug in your own posting list, or your own way of storing the data. So if you have something unique about the way you want to leverage your signals, your data, you can go plug that in. Uh, if you're really academically oriented, we have all of the latest and greatest models that the academics worry about when it comes to you know, things like BM25 and all that kind of stuff. I know that may not mean a lot to you right now, but if you're interested in those kinds of things, it is possible. Other things we've done, hey, everybody's got to have column storage. Sometimes your data is better stored in column uh, orientation than row orientation. We allow you to do that. It's all very pluggable. That actually comes out of the pluggable formats capability. So again, if you, want, if you have a better way of doing that, you can go ahead and do that, right? Uh, I mentioned the spatial capabilities. I'll talk about some of that later. Uh, we've added in essentially cursor-like capability or deep paging capability. At the end of the day, you know, a search engine was, is usually optimized towards that top end problem, but then you'd often have secondary use cases where you actually want to iterate through and do larger table scans, if you will. We made that a lot more efficient now as well. It used to be that memory blew up. Now that's all taken care of. So if, if you have a kind of problem where 
you want to do a search against, say, a billion tweets, and you're going to get back a, a million of them, and then you want to do some so, you know, analysis of networks, and within that match, you can now afford to do that through the cursor stuff and get all of those results out of the system and still have all the good fuzzy matching capabilities. And then we've uh, made all the distributed stuff a whole lot easier as well now. <laughs> Leveraging Zookeeper, take care of all of the leader election, the sharding, the distribution of documents, custom routing, all of that kind of stuff. So you have total control over how you want to route your documents, how you want to search against your content, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, I said we were adding a number of database things, joins, grouping, pivot faceting, things like that. I'll show you some examples of these as we go. Uh, this is a Hadoop user group. Uh, it's been really interesting. If, for those of you who don't know, actually Hadoop started in the Lucene project uh, way back when. Uh, Doug Cutting and Mike Caffarella uh, were doing this to build out Nudge. Yahoo came along and said, hey, Doug, you would like to invest in you and in this project. Spun it out of the Lucene project. It's kind of obviously taken on a life of its own, which is great to see. Uh, but, you know, hey, we still use it as well. You can, it's really good at building search indexes if you want. Uh, so we kind of come back full circle on that. That's all very tightly integrated back in with Solar now, such that if you want to store your indexes in HDFS, if you want to build your indexes in, in Hadoop, you can do all of those kinds of things in a very straightforward way. Uh, there's a link on how to do that. More interesting, though, I think, you know, one of the trends we're seeing is that, you know, you're really leveraging Hadoop and this batch processing or large-scale capabilities to figure out how to better enrich your data and better understand your users, et cetera, essentially what, you know, likes of Yahoo, Google have been doing for years. That stuff is all getting way easier to do now in solar because of these kinds of integrations. Uh, we at LucidWorks have also added in a number of capabilities on top of this, basically to allow you to ingest a whole bunch of different data types, be able to work with Pig, Hive, Logstash, et cetera, et cetera. If you want, you can download it there. Uh, and so that kind of gives you a lot tighter integration with the Duke. Okay? Any kind of questions on the high level stuff? All right, very cool. So let me just jump in. I know in the interest of time, we've got about a half hour. Um, total. So let me jump into just some demos that showcase some of these ideas that I'm talking about in terms of leveraging search technology to answer uh, questions that perhaps you wouldn't talk, you wouldn't have thought about before. The first one, you know, I mentioned there's some more and more interest in time series kind of data here. In this particular one, uh, you know, you see this a lot with log data. Log data is essentially time series data, right? People want to know when things are broken, etc. They want to see trends in their logs, all of that kind of stuff. I've actually taken and built a demo out over, uh, uh, over a data set. Actually, some of this is from uh, Yahoo, uh, their Yahoo Finance. Basically put that in, treated it as time series data, allowing to do merges between those. Uh, in this particular case, I'm doing this on top of uh, solar and then with some visualization technology that we've open sourced called, uh, we've taken the Kibana project from Elasticsearch and ported that to work on solar. So let me just show you some of that. So like I said, we've got uh, a couple of different data sources in here. S&P 500 companies, uh, all of their historical data, and then uh, all their press releases and then uh, tweets. And so you can build out essentially everything you see here in terms of dashboards, et cetera, is all built out uh, on top of asking the search engine to answer these kinds of questions. And I can come in here and uh, do questions like, show me all of the data around Apple. And I can slice and dice that data. I can you know, build out my own custom dashboards, et cetera, et cetera. I can also very quickly load up and share other kinds of data sets. So if I want to look at social data, all the tweets coming in around uh, these particular companies, I can go and do that. And so again, this is all powered off of search. We're drawing pretty pictures, which we all know the business side loves to see. So you can build pretty pictures off of this data, but more importantly, you can also then drill in on the exact data by doing searches and getting back your most relevant results there. So that's an, an example of building out, you know, on top of fastening, on top of spatial, on top of the fuzzy matching capabilities of the search engine. Uh, and I think most of you would agree that this doesn't necessarily look like traditional search in the sense that I do have a search box, but it's not necessarily the main driving factor for the way I interact with that data. 
So that's the first example. Um, the second one, as I promised earlier, uh, for some reason that's not showing up, was really looking at uh, a bunch of different data sources. In this case, it was uh, PubChem. These are all publicly available from like the uh, NCBI and essentially the federal government. There's PubChem data in there, which is uh, basically a database full of uh, molecules and, and chemical structures. There is uh, clinicaltrials.gov, there is the Federal Adverse Events uh, Database, etc. And the interesting thing here that we did is this was about a six week project that we did that uh, we used to do for a lot of pre-processing to do some of the more complex joins where we really had to uh, uh, leverage, you know, kind of the, the full joint capabilities of, of uh, Hadoop, and then we bring them into solar, and, and then the whole UI and a lot of the runtime uh, happenings that are taking place are using solar's join capabilities as well. Uh, and so let me just switch over to this one. This one's interesting because what you do here is you actually start off by putting in uh, uh, indication of interest, or basically the symptoms that I'm seeing. And what I so I did one search there. That search went against a list of Compound, chemical compounds that are approved to treat a particular disease or a particular symptom. In this case, for those who can't see in the back, I typed in the word headache and it gave me back things like salicylic acid, aspirin, ibuprofen, kind of all the usual suspects. So if I'm a researcher on this stuff, yeah, well, of course I know ibuprofen. But then what we do is actually do a similarity ranking between those chemical compounds with ones that aren't necessarily approved but are chemically similar to the original ones. And again, this is a search question. This is not something I'm pre-computing. I'm doing that at search time off of ranking those two kinds of things. So now as a researcher, I can start to see, well, what are the related compounds? And huh, maybe I should go spend some time digging into those. I can visualize those in different ways. Uh, I can drill in on the content. This is all, again, everything you see here is powered by facets and searching. I can slice and dice the data. I can look at who's doing clinical trials in this data. I can look at what are people are reporting as safety issues on this. Again, all fascinating off of this kind of stuff. I always love this one because one of the, uh, the main adverse events that people are complaining about for pain medication is pain. <laughs> Pretty deep there, uh, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, you can also drill in, for instance, on things like who's funding this kind of information. So again, if I'm a researcher in this field, I can get a much more complete picture of my content, but I can also use my brain and start typing in queries using search box, which is again what we all do every day and are all pretty good at, or at least we're all trained to do those things pretty well. So. That is the second demo, and just to finish off with, yep. So the data that he showed, is it? Hello. So the data that he showed just now was, was it coming out from PubChem? Uh, yeah, so PubChem was one of the data sets. There's actually six total in there. PubChem, uh, like you said, clinicaltrials.gov, federal adverse events uh, database. There's a FDA, excuse me, funding database in there or, or data set in there. And there might be one more I'm forgetting offhand. Yep. So. <clears throat> For the data visualization itself, um, what was, uh, did you use Kibana or what was that that you used? So this project was about a six week uh, thing that we did in partnership with Booz Allen. Uh, they provided <laughs> the uh, the healthcare expert or the, the, chemi the chemical expertise, we did all of the a lot of the visualization and the data processing. Uh, what you saw there for, for data set was all D3. Just That took about four weeks to build out the, the visualization layer. It took about two weeks to do the data pre-processing, you know, kind of figuring out how we wanted to join the data and all that. But that's all D3 visualizations, just interacting with uh, solar. Underneath. Last demo, uh, you know, as I alluded to earlier, uh, you know, at least in our uh, lingo that we use at Lucid Works, single processing is really what powers modern insight into data, right? You know, at the end of the day, we're all doing the work for Yahoo and Google and Bing, et cetera, et cetera, right? Every action we take, every uh, thing we share, all of that kind of stuff. 
Those in, my, in, our, in the way we talk are all signals. Those are what power modern relevance. The core ranking engine technology that's been in Lucene for a long time, that gets you a good part of the way to finding your answer, but it's really all the feedback that we all give that power, getting that last mile, if you will. So things like clicks, conversions, sharing, history, et cetera, et cetera, what a user's done in the past, all of those are the signals that we want to uh, leverage and make easy. Believe it or not, uh, you know, not everybody has hundreds of people working for them who do nothing but figure out how those signals work. So what we've been trying to do in the open source and then at Lucid Works as well is make it easier for everyday developers, people who don't have, you know, hundreds of people on staff to get and take advantage of those signals such that they can build out more and more capabilities along those lines. And so the beauty of all of this is at the end of the day what we try to do is you just go and deploy more solar and we ask solar to store all of these signals, we ask solar to process these signals along with some capabilities on top of it. The real nice thing for a lot of people is that your whole data workflow, your whole operational footprint just gets a whole lot simpler because I just I already know how to deploy solar, just go deploy more of it. Right? And so that gets a lot simpler. Um, the other thing that often happens is you see at uh, a lot, especially like e-commerce companies, etc., is this kind of data usually lives off in marketing, or you have to custom write your own log analytics tools, etc. We try to just close that loop for you automatically, feed that data back into itself, such that you can then go and query that, etc. So in this particular case, uh, it can demonstrate a, just a small search and recommendations application that we built out. It's an e-commerce data set. Uh, 1.2 million products, so a decent sized e-commerce data set. More interestingly enough, the, the company that uh, put this data set up, they also gave, I think, one month's worth of click data. So people who did this query clicked on this document. And from that, we can go and build uh, a simple little UI that really looks at how users uh, interact with this data and how we can leverage these clicks as part of making it for relevance. So, Pretty simple uh, demo here. Really, I'm going to show you kind of two hats. One is an end user hat, and then the other, I'll just show you real quickly kind of the back end hat because, again, all that data is in solar. Uh, pretty straightforward search and hierarchical data going on here. I can come in here and type the word, for instance, iPad, and good Lord willing, with uh, live demos, we'll see results. You can see here that uh, this is obviously something that we wouldn't necessarily show to end users, but I'm actually asking Solar to do a bunch of statistical calculations on the data. Uh, so again, you can ask Solar to do stats and those kinds of things. So in particular, I find some interesting things here. Uh, like for instance, the, the company that built this data has a sales rank value in their data set. Well, in this, for this particular query, 1,200 documents are actually missing that value. So if I'm using that as a scoring factor, it, it might behoove me to have, make sure that I have all the values filled in there. You can see, you know, we do a search, we've got matches. Uh, I think if you're like me, you would agree these matches are okay. You can understand why when I search for iPad, I got matches on all the key, you know, all the documents that have the keyword iPad in them. But I think you would agree that they're a little bit uninspiring. And I think the reason they're uninspiring is because they forgot to take advantage of what users are doing with that data. So what we then do is I index all of those clicks into a separate solar index. And then at runtime, I click this little box that says include recommendations. I do my query against solar. I get back my recommended documents for that query. And then I do my contextual search against the main product catalog. And now I have a bunch of recommendations built off on top of that. And I think you would agree that for the word iPad here, these make a lot more sense that I'm returning the actual iPad. This one at the top shows up because actually one of the things you can do in this demo, and I'm not going to do it in the interest of time, is I can simulate clicks while they're happening. I can come in here and we can pretend that uh, 10,000 people came in and actually click the simulate clicks button and then we could in real time feed that back in and leverage those things. And in this particular case, I already did that for this one. Switch, switching gears real quick and then I'll finish up. Again, I said all that signal data is in solar. Well, what does that mean? That means I can search all of that signal data. I can fasten on it. I can do all of the things that I did on my core product catalog. I can now do to my signal data. It's kind of meta 
if you really want to get into it. But um, the interesting thing, you know, you can look at this data set. You can see right away if I put them into buckets here that, you know, yeah, a whole bunch of products don't get any clicks and a few get a lot. Um, you can see down in the middle of here, these are essentially all of my top queries and the top document for each query that was clicked. This is leveraging Solar's grouping capabilities that are built in. And so right away now as a developer, I have in my, hand, in my hands the ability to see what people actually care about in my data set without having to go ask marketing or go ask the business side. I've got it all right there and I'm able to leverage it in exactly the same way that I built my core product catalog. I can switch through and look at the query sides of things. I can see here's all of the, uh, here's all of the top documents that were clicked on for HP Touchpad. HP Touchpad is a really weird one in this data set.